Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. Great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're turning through to Luke chapter 13, but before I read our passage, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you that you speak to us today. And we ask that you would indeed speak to our hearts, that we might behold Christ in his glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 13, picking up at verse 10. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for eighteen years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water it? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? As he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the people rejoiced at all the glorious things that were done by him. Well, we're beginning a new section here in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Yesterday, we were at the end of Jesus' teaching in the midst of a vast crowd. He was teaching his disciples and then teaching the crowd and back and forth. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves, according to the wisdom of Luke and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, in a synagogue with Jesus. Jesus is doing that which he always did on the Sabbath. He would gather together with the people of God for worship. And he would come there, and he would open up the word of God, and he would teach. And so we find him once more doing that. And and it's a very fascinating story. There are a few incidences in the Gospels with this similar story, different occasions, similar effects. And in this one, we're confronted by three primary characters. We are faced with a poor, twisted, disabled woman. We are confronted with a very proud and yet very hypocritical ruler. And we're confronted with a very glorious and very gracious saviour. So firstly, notice this woman. 18 years, we're told. 18 years, this poor woman has been bound up by what's called by Luke, who's a doctor, we remember, a disabling spirit in verse 11. What does it look like? She's bent over and could not fully straighten herself. I I can think of my grandmother, who was a very tall, uh, proud, I mean in a good way, tall, proud woman, who was uh, very large in in life and, and love and stature, but due to her old age, ended up bent over and was far smaller than me. Here we see... Not an elderly woman. It's interesting. It's not an old woman who's bent over, but just a woman. We don't know how old she was, but she was a bit of a wretch from a human standpoint, suffering under the effects of the curse and the affliction of the devil. The devil had uh, put upon her this disablement. Hence, I think what Luke is saying by a disabling spirit. She's a poor woman. But notice what she's doing. She's described by Jesus as a daughter of Abraham, which is significant. She's described as being in the Sabbath. Her response to the healing is glorifying God. This is a believer. She is a believer who loves the Lord. And who has gathered together with God's people in spite of her condition, in spite of the shame that would have come with it. She seeks God's face. She seeks God's grace. And what is she confronted with? She's confronted with the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus looks at this poor woman and says to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he lays his hands on her, and immediately she is made straight. She, she receives the very thing she longs for, but never really expected would happen. She didn't go to the Sabbath that day. She didn't go to the synagogue that day expecting to be healed. She just went to praise her God. But God visited her with healing in his wings in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then we're confronted by this incredibly hypocritical ruler. What's striking is the ruler doesn't even have the backbone to address Jesus. He doesn't say, you shouldn't heal on the Sabbath. He addresses the woman and the crowd and says, there's six days, come another day to be healed. You see, he can't question what Jesus has done, can he? He can only rebuke the crowd that is around him. And unfortunately, this is so often people inside and outside the world who hate God and hate Christ so much that they would shut off the means of grace to the very people who need them. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? When, when the very thing that the people need is closed off, access is denied. Because we think we know better. Because we despise the ways of the Lord at times. And so it was with this hypocritical leader who would feed his donkey on the Sabbath, water his animals on the Sabbath, but not allow this poor old woman to receive the healing that she needs, or anyone else. But notice the grace and glory of our Redeemer. Jesus heals this wonderful woman and rebukes the hypocrites. Why? Because the fulfillment of the Sabbath is rest and release from the burdens of sin. The fulfillment of the Sabbath is worship. Now, in case you're thinking that <clears throat> this parable is a justification to not observe the Sabbath, you're very mistaken. What's the outcome of this story? Everyone glorifies God on the Sabbath. What's this woman do in response to her healing? She glorifies God on the Sabbath. She doesn't go off and work. No, she worships her God who saved her. You see, what, what we're seeing here in Jesus Christ is his power over the devil as he sets this woman free that he is the Lord of the Sabbath, that he is the only one in whom we find all worship, praise, honor, and glory. And that ultimately, the, the reason for worship is that men and women might experience the grace of God. This is the place, this is the chief place where the means of grace come to us through the gathering of God's people in worship and praise. This, this story is a story about the infinite grace and mercy and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ as he heals this poor broken sinner. But it's also a promise. It's a promise to you and I that if we will come to Christ, we will receive the same gracious help, the same gracious pardon, the same gracious care that the works of the devil will be destroyed in our lives too, and that we will be liberated to worship him and glorify him. So when you go to church on Sunday, look to Christ as the one who liberates you from the work of the devil. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful story of the grace and mercy and glory of Christ. Help us to worship him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.